Good morning. Welcome to Harvest Life Church via video today. Like many of you all across America, we're sequestered or whatever you want to call it in our homes today, but our God is not bound. The building may be closed, but the church is open. And it's wonderful to see you. I can, you say, how can you say you see me? In my heart, I see you. I see you, Harvest Life. I, I know where you sit in the church. I see your faces, and I promise you, we are one spirit. We are joined together. Uh, though we're in each other's homes, I promise you God is with us. I appreciate the wonderful worship we had from Kim and Wade a while ago. It was just truly awesome. Jane and I were worshiping right here. Uh, for all of you who may be joining us on this broadcast, I just want you to know we love you. I also want to send a shout out to all the healthcare workers. Uh, many of us have seen people all over America thanking these people, and we certainly we want to thank you for everything you're doing, especially those of our house. We want to lift up Kim and Terry and Brother Kenny to you and just say, hey, we appreciate you so much. We appreciate so much what you do, and we give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor for everything you're doing. Uh, I'm saying glory and honor like we're doing it to God, but, but right now it's just so personal what you're doing. I mean, putting your life on the line, taking care of you know, hopefully we don't have any loved ones in there, anybody we know right now in the hospital, but, you know, we might one day, and you'll be taking care of them. We know you're taking care of someone's loved ones, and we really, really appreciate that. Each week, we've been taking one person in our church and uh, making them a prayer target. And Brother Kenny, I don't know if you're watching this morning, but today is your day. You're our prayer target. We're praying for you today, brother. And what we simply do is this. We simply say, uh, may the Bible says that every good and perfect gift comes from the Father above. And so, Brother Kenny, we pray today that every good and perfect gift comes upon you. And all week long, I believe by the Holy Spirit, your face is going to come up before us, and we're going to breathe out your name, Brother Kenny. We're going to breathe out your name, and we're going to think about that. Every good and every perfect gift, every protection of God, everything that's wonderful, come down upon you this week. We are thinking about you this week and praying for you, Brother Kenny. Also, we started something in our church a few weeks ago that I believe was ordained by God. We believe that death and life is in the power of the tongue and that we can bless one another. And so today, I want to speak a blessing over you. And you know what it is. You know what's coming if you go to our church. And I want you to speak it over your brothers and sisters right there from your household today. I say to you, with every molecule of faith that's in my very being, Live long and prosper and be in hell. I say it again to the sons and daughters of God watching. Live long and prosper and be in hell. I also just want to remind people that I, at the beginning of this year and at the end of last year, I said that it had been the very best year to this point for my wife, Janet, and I. And I said that I was believing that this year, 2020, was going to be the very best year of our lives to this point. And I want you to know something. I believe at the end of this year, despite all the stuff that happens to us individually, corporately as a nation, I believe I'm going to be able to say that, that it was the very best year to this point of our lives. And I'm trusting that you are going to be able to say that, that it was the very best year of your life to this point. I want you to believe that. We're going to get out of this. We're going to come through it. But God's teaching us some things. We're getting, you know, we've all prayed for revival. We can have a revival right there in our home today. We can have a revival right there in our homes. And when we come back together corporately, the fire of God can be burning in each and every one of our lives. And I believe in God. That's what's going to happen. Well, let's get right to the message. I've entitled this, The Eternal Universal Vaccine. You know, all across the world, they're rushing for a to try to come up with a cure, a vaccine for this coronavirus. But I want you to know if you're a son or a daughter of the Most High God, that God gave you one that's eternal and universal for every disease, every plague, every virus that may come down the pipe. There's something you can do right now today for the inoculation of your spirit, soul, and body. Now, this may be controversial to some, but I promise you it's right there in the Word of God, and you can believe it. If you've got your Bibles, I want you to go with me to Exodus uh, chapter 12, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 13. It says, Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, 
Our God still speaks. I just want to remind you of that. This mouth shall be, this month shall be your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the persons. According to each man's need, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it from the sheep or from the goats. Now you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight. And they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat. Then they shall eat the flesh on that night roasted in fire with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat it raw nor boiled at all with water, but roasted in fire, its head with its legs and its entrails. You shall let none of it remain until morning and what remains of it until morning you shall burn with fire. And thus you shall eat it with a belt on your waist, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. So shall you eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. 430 years approximately before this, God had cut a covenant with his man, Abraham. He had had Abraham cut animals in half and to walk the blood trail between those entrails. And God made a covenant with Abraham. And God told Abraham that his descendants would go into captivity, but with a strong and mighty hand, he would deliver them. And God instituted the first lamb. And we know who this lamb represents, the lamb of God who would come to deliver us from our sins and iniquity and truly set us free. But first he had to set his children Israel free. And before he did that, he had them kill a lamb. And God was going to pass through and, judge, and kill the firstborn of Egypt and judge all the gods of Israel that night. But he told them to take that lamb's blood and to sprinkle and put blood over the door, doorpost of their house. And he said, when I see the blood, I'll hover over you. I'll pass over you. And not one in Israel died who obeyed that command. They ate of that lamb. And I want you to know in Psalm 105, 37, I'm going to read that to you. Something happened when they ate of the lamb and they put that blood over their lives. It said, he also brought them out with silver and gold. And there was none feeble among his tribes. God, something happened when they partook of the lamb. Something happened when they took of that Passover meal, that covenant meal. That the theologians say between one and four million people were in captivity there in Egypt. But not one feeble, not one weak, not one tottering, if you look up that word, after they took of that lamb. They had to leave at midnight. Israel, I mean, Egypt drove them out. And it says God had told them to ask of their Egyptian neighbors silver and gold. And it said they threw it on them. They wanted him out of there so much they gave him all their wealth. That's why he said he, they went out laden with silver and gold. But they also went out healthy and they also went out whole. I want you to know something. When we go over here to John chapter 6, I want you to go there now. In verse 53, the, la the lamb, the real lamb, says something. He said, then Jesus said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, Unless you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Now, this caused a great controversy because, I mean, you know, Jesus is not like he's talking about cannibalism here, but we know that's not the case. We know that's not the case at all because I want you to go ahead and be turning to Matthew chapter 26, verse 17 in a little bit. We're going to read this. But I want us to go back that. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. So we can infer from that that when we do eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, we have life. Well, you may be, if you're listening to that statement, you may be like the children of Israel were a little bit confused. Is Jesus talking about cannibalism here? Certainly not. But he is telling them that he is going to leave something upon this earth, 
something of him that we can become one with him, something that releases the same blessing into our life that was released upon those Israelites. Do you know that morning when Egypt drove them out with all their silver and gold and all their livestock, all their babies, all their children, that the senior citizens who they say are the most susceptible to this, uh, this coronavirus, that there was not one feeble one among them. They didn't have to carry them out. They didn't have to have stretchers to get them out of there. It said there was not one tottering. Strength filled their very being. It didn't matter how old they were. They had partaken of the lamb. And they were strong. And they were viable. And so were you today. Oh yes, there's plagues all around us. But we've been talking about Psalm 91 for a while. We are in the secret place of the Most High God. We abide in His Word, and His Word abides in us. But the Jesus knew we were going to face plagues and stuff, and He gave us an eternal, universal vaccine because He came and He made a better, new covenant with us. Let's read it here in Matthew chapter 26, verse 17. Now, on the first day of the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, they were celebrating that Passover from back in Egypt. But Jesus is fixing to institute a new covenant. The disciples came to Jesus saying, Now to him, saying to him, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus directed them. And they prepared the Passover. When evening had came, uh, come, he sat down with the twelve. Now as they were eating, he said, Assuredly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were exceedingly sorrowful. And each of them began to say to him, Lord, is it I? He answered and said, He who dipped his hand with me in this dish will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes just as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been good for that man if he had not been born. Then Judas, who was betraying him, answered and said, Rabbi, is it I? He said to him, You have said it. And as they were eating, listen to this so carefully, saints of God, Jesus took the bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remissions of sin. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Jesus told in John 6, 53, he said, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Now he comes right here. They're sitting down with that Passover meal. Every Jew knows it represents that lamb that was slain uh, for them as they were delivered from Egyptian bondage. They remember that there was not one feeble one among them. They remember all the great miracles God did to bring them out of captivity, out of bondage. And now we sit here, praise the living God. And Jesus looks at that bread and said, this is my body. He took that cup and said, this is my blood of a new covenant, a living covenant. The Bible says it's a better covenant based upon better promises. And they, and you say, well, we do that. We take the elements. He never called it an element church. He said, this is my body by faith. I'm not talking about his physical body. We're not talking about eating flesh and blood here. Jesus was sitting there. He didn't hold his arm out and said, take a bite. No, he said, this is my body. By faith, when we partake, and we're going to do it here in just a minute, when we partake of that bread, by faith, it becomes the very spiritual body of Jesus. We become one with him. And when we drink that juice, it becomes his body. Blood And everything that blood did for us, everything he did when he was beaten at the whipping post, it becomes viable for you and I. We partake of it by faith and we reap all the benefits of what Christ Jesus has done for you and I. It's powerful. 
It's not just a religious thing we do. It's not just a symbol of, of that. We're not just remembering. Something supernatural happens for us just like something supernatural happened under that, co or that old covenant. Matter of fact, it's even more supernatural for you and I. It's more powerful for, that, for, for you and I than it was for them. Not one feeble one among them. Not one tottering. Not one weak. Not one sick. When they partook of the Lamb. You and I still today, we partake of a lamb, but it's not a four-legged lamb. It is the lamb of God, the son of the living God who came and laid down his life for you and I. And all of our sins are forgiven, those of us who receive him, and all of our sicknesses. Psalm 103 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits, who forgives all my iniquities and heals all my diseases and he redeems my life from destruction he crowns my head with loving kindness and tender mercies so my mouth is satisfied uh, so my so my mouth is uh satisfied with good things and my youth is renewed even as the eagles these are the benefits that come to us as we partake of god's very covenant meal right now we're doing that. Now, I want us to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and look at something here. Because there's a lot of confusion about this. You know, some people say, well, it's just something we do. It's an observ observance. We do it, you know, once a year. And, and we think about that sacrifice. Well, you need to think about the sacrifice. I want you to think about it. It's holy. It's a very reverent time. It should be. But something's happening when we eat of that bread that is his flesh. His spirit flesh. Everything he gave us, everything he died to give us, everything he did at that whipping post is for us. It's released. Jesus knew we needed something physical. See, it's not, Jesus died for us in the spirit realm. He went to hell for us so we didn't have to go. He died in the garden, garden of Gethsemane. His soul, his suke, his mind, will, and emotions paid the full price, the full penalty, and his body died on that cross. So Jesus gives us a covenant meal that heals gives life to our spirit, we are spirit, to our soul, our mind, the peace of God, and even to our bodies, the health of our, our flesh, which we need right now. We need the eternal, universal vaccine. And we're about to take it, brothers and sisters in Christ. We're about to take it. But let's read this here. Again, this is uh, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three through 34. For I received, this is the Apostle Paul talking, from the Lord, that which I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as you, often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Notice he said again, He's consistent. This is my body. This is my blood. Therefore, whoever, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Verse 27. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the world. Therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. But if anyone is hungry, let him eat at home, lest you come together for judgment, and the rest I will set in order when I come. Now, you may disagree with me about this. That's fine. I wouldn't preach it if I didn't believe I was right. But you're, you, have, you can disagree. But I hope you'll hear my heart. We have taught, the church has taught for centuries that if a person has sin in their life and they partake of that cup, 
that the judgment of God is going to come upon them. They're going to get sick and they're going to die. There are people absolutely terrified when the plague is passed because they believe that, hey, you know, I know I'm not perfect. I know that there's some sin in my life. I know I'm going to, you know, I've done wrong. And they believe that they're killing themselves when they eat of that cup. Let me tell you something. Jesus said if a man says he has no sin, he is a liar. And he makes God a liar. The Bible says we've all sinned. The Bible said if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and that he has become a propitiation for our sin. The Lord understood that you may fall into sin, that you might sin. Now, we're not telling you to live a sinful life. We're not telling you to live in wickedness. Matter of fact, as we examine ourselves in just a moment, what we're doing is we're saying, hey, if the Holy Spirit shows us something in our life, we repent of that. We surely do. But also it says we don't don't properly discern the Lord's body. When you partake of the Lord's Supper, do you think about everything he died to give you? Do you know he went to the whipping post before he went to the cross? And the Bible says, by his stripes ye were, past tense, healed. In the mind of God, God paid the full price for you to be healed. I hope you'll receive that. I hope you'll take advantage of that this morning. If you're watching and you're not saved, please, Give your heart to the Lord. God's not angry with you. He sent forth his son to pay the price for you. The Bible says in Corinthians, he's not angry. He wants to be reconciled to you. He wants to be your father. He wants you to be his son or daughter. So call upon the Lord today. But if you're a Christian and, and maybe there's some things that are not right between you and the Lord, some things you're doing wrong, then repent. Now is the time of repentance. But that unworthy manner is when we do not consider what he did. We don't consider the whipping post. We don't consider the full price that he paid on that cross, that you and I could live a forgiven life where we are constantly striving to walk with God without sin. The Bible don't say when you sin. It says if you sin. We have an advocate. Jesus made provision for that. Jesus did not give us a covenant meal to heal us and cleanse us. That we could, so that if there was the least little thing wrong with us, we couldn't take it. No, you repent right now. You say, Lord, I'm sorry. Get that thing right. And then as you partake of this, I want you to realize that when you eat, oh, it's going to look like a cracker, but when you eat it, I want you by faith to believe what Jesus said. Jesus said, this is my body. Now, I don't believe it's his flesh, but I believe it's his body. And I believe everything his body did for me at the whipping post and at the cross is released into my life when I partake of that. And I believe when I drink that cup, oh, it's going to look like juice. But I believe Jesus. Jesus said, this is my blood. It's a new covenant. The Bible says in the old covenant that the life is in the blood. I believe the very life of God is in that. And that the zoe, the life of God, is going to flow into our beings any virus, any disease, anything the enemy's tried to put in there is going to be destroyed by the life of the living God. He is alive and well. And I guess what? We are alive and well because of him. The Bible says even now you and I have eternal life. Why? Because we eat the flesh and we drink the blood of the Son of, Son of God. Remember he said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. But we do eat the flesh, and we do eat, drink the blood. Oh, it's not just a symbol. It's life itself. It is a partaking of who he, who he is and what he did and the essence of what he is for all of eternity. It truly is the eternal, universal vaccine. Now, I have mine ready. If you don't, uh, I hope, uh, you know, I told everybody, I hope you're prepared. But if not, I'm just going to give you a minute, run, grab your cracker, that's going to become his flesh. Run, grab you some juice that's going to become his blood. And we're going to partake together. My wife, Janet, is sitting right over here to my left. She's our, you're right, <laughs> my right on here. But anyhow, she's over here. She's got her, you know, she's got the, got it. I've got it right here. I'm fixing to pick it up. This is a holy moment. When it talks about an unworthy matter, they were coming together uh, and treating it just like a meal. Some of them were coming early and they were going ahead and eating. They didn't do it as, as one. They treated it just like it was common. No, we should never treat this like it's common. This is holy. This is a holy moment. 
But it's not just a religious moment. It's a life-giving moment. It is real. Oh, I feel his presence so strong right now. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus you begin to feel his presence. As we were worshiping, I'm sure you felt his presence because he is everywhere. He is the omnipresent God. He is here. Oh, it's very real because it, this is his body and blood right here before us. We're fixing to partake, saints. I pray you're ready. I pray you're ready. I pray you're ready. <laughs> oh, it's awesome. It's awesome. Jesus held up that bread and he said, Take, eat. This is my body. Just for a moment before we take. <laughs> oh, just before a moment before we take. Put yourself in that reverent mode. Think about the whipping post. We saw the movie, The Passion, and it can't even begin to describe what he went through. He did that for us. It says, by his bruise, we are healed. It's, and look it up the word. I mean, I, I can't keep just teaching and teaching. on. Look up the word. It means real physical sickness. He paid the price for that. You don't have to. And part of taking an unworthy manner is not partaking of everything he did for you. As we eat of this which is his flesh, he says, I want you to receive the eternal universal vaccine. If you're sick, believe God's going to make you well right now. Believe that. Believe Psalm 91, the secret place, because you're abiding in him when you do this. This is his word. He asked us, commanded us to do it. He said, if we don't do it, we don't have life. But we have his life. Let's eat together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for paying the full penalty. Going to the whipping post, being bruised. Thank you for the stripes you take have taken and took that I might be whole and well. And I receive your healing right now. I receive everything you did for me, sir. And I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Thank him, church. I thank you. Thank you. His anointing, his unction, his power, his magnificence. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Then he took the cup and he said, take, drink. This is my blood of a new covenant. In Hebrews, it calls it a superior covenant, a better covenant, based upon better promises. Under the old covenant, you had to keep the law to receive the blessings of God. Under the new covenant, we're under grace. How many of you know, if you go back and you read that in Exodus, it was a mixed multitude. It was before the law was given. It was all grace, and this is all grace. The life is in the blood. This is the blood of our Savior by His Word, not by mine. This is what He said. He didn't say it's just an element, a symbol. He said it's my blood. I want you to take it by faith that it is His blood and that the very life of your God and my God is in it. And as we drink it, it gives life to my I am spirit. It gives life to my soul. It gives life to my body and to yours. Brothers and sisters of God, drink. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for washing away all of my sins. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In all three of the Gospels, ooh. <laughs> in all three of the Gospels, after they took that covenant meal, it says, then they sang a hymn. I can't sing like Wade and Kim and our worship team. We miss that so much today. We miss seeing you. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. But I do want to sing this little chorus. Overlook 
the, the voice that sings, but sing in your homes. Mm -hmm. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood. We missed you guys today. We missed seeing your face, but you know what? We live in a wonderful time. Technology. I want to remind you about Wednesday night. Brother Andy is going to be teaching, I believe, from Zoom. Just, you know, I'm sure he'll let us know. Uh, I missed that last week. I'm going to get to do it this week. Got my app downloaded, Zoom. We're going to download that. It's downloaded now. What I need is somebody to start a chat. And uh, Andy, if you're watching, somebody to give us a code. And I would like us to get together uh, when I conclude this broadcast on Zoom for just a short moment, get to see each other's beautiful faces, get to uh, greet each other, and if you have a prayer request, all of us pray together. We, we won't take up all day doing that, but I miss you. I want to see you. So if somebody could do that, uh, I've got my Zoom out. We can just get together just real briefly and just look at each other. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful we can do that? That's an awesome blessing. What a wonderful time we live in. But before we close, we just want to pray together about this coronavirus. Father, we ask for your mercy. All across the world, Father God, we see the death toll. We see people dying from this. People you died for. Jesus, you paid the price here. And Lamb, we want you to receive the reward of your sacrifice. Father, in your mercy, roll this thing back. Roll this thing back. Destroy it out of your mercy because God your word says your mercies are renewed every day and we cry out for your mercy we cry out for your mercy we pray protection over our family our lost loved ones friends our neighbors your protection be upon them Father protect their life let it be precious in your sight and Father destroy this thing from the earth let them find that vaccine for those who do not believe in the vaccine we just took let them find a vaccine for them. But we thank you, Father, that we got to partake of your eternal, universal vaccine today. In Jesus' name. I'm going to get off here. I hope to see a code there on chat and uh, or Zoom. And let's just all get together very briefly. God bless you. Amen. Bye-bye.